Ty Underwood found dead in her car riddled with bullets. Suspicion points to Ty's new boyfriend, Carlton Champion. But when cops dig deep into Ty's cell phone, the case takes a shocking left turn. While we were looking at the phone, we saw that the victim had been communicating with two different people. One of them is Carlton, the other a mystery man known only as George. It turns out George did live near the area where Ty was killed, and so George became one of the prime suspects at that point. Investigators grilled the man for nearly two hours. During the interview, they had talked about communicating, but George said that they never met up with each other. When I realized that we, you know, this wasn't going where I wanted to go, I just deleted the whole thing. I left it alone right after that. I don't really think you did, man. I think he came to you. Officers lean on George to get to the truth. The suspect tells them he can end their suspicion once and for all. Well, I know you got a lie detector in here. Why don't you just give me the lie detector and ask me that I see him that night? Would you do that for us? Hell uh, yeah, let's go. Really? I'm trying to get the hell out of here, man. He took a polygraph exam, and it was later determined that he was not involved. With George cleared, investigators are back to square one. And square one is Ty's new boyfriend, Carlton Champion. The freshman football player insists he never left his dorm room the night of the murder. But cops go to the surveillance tape, and Carlton clearly fumbles. Buried an hour after hour of footage, there's this. Surprise, that's Carlton Champion, exiting his dorm right before the murder, then returning home just minutes after Ty is left shot and bleeding behind the wheel. The time stamps on the surveillance tape uh, were narrow, but just enough time for Carlton to leave the campus, commit the murder, and then return. Then a key piece of evidence seals Carlton's fate. The DNA sample from inside Ty's car comes back from the lab. Guess who it matches? They found Carlton's DNA on the seatbelt and the door handle inside the car, which is the same car that Carlton had said he'd never been inside. Detectives believe they have Ty's killer. They brought Carlton in to the police station for an interview. Obviously, you know, we're investigating the homicide. You know Tyrone. You have sex with Tyrone. Cops think Champion will crumble under the overwhelming evidence and sitting in handcuffs. But the young football star shamelessly jukes through question after question without showing a single sign of remorse. So let's go down here. Hunger. We should have ate at school. Yes, you heard him right. When asked about the murder, Champion smiles and says he wants a hamburger. It was real apparent that Carlton Champion wasn't taking this serious, and I really believe that he thought that he was going to beat this charge. I'm not hungry. I'm hungry as hell. Yeah, I played him water burger. Too. Sit there. You ain't got a taste of no water burger then? Burger King, McDonald's. So are you gay? I mean, I'm, I'm hungry. Are you gay? Nah, I'm not gay at all. Then why are you having sex with a man? I want to have sex with a man. He responded the same way to every tactic, which was with arrogance and refusal uh, to even discuss the topic. Uh, his uh, really indifference to the gravity of the situation was sociopathic. Even seasoned detectives have had their fill and turn up the heat. Carlton, listen. What's going to happen is Carlton is you're going to go, and I'm going to I'm going to arrest you for for murder. Sir, I'm hungry. Okay. Be quiet. Listen. I'm hungry. I'm going to arrest you for murder. I know what I'm here for, sir. Okay. I'm hungry though. I don't care if you're hungry. Be quiet. Thank God. Thank. He was nonchalant and indifferent, uh, which is really something pretty rare and, and very scary. Uh, someone who's able to uh, show no emotion when they're being confronted with evidence that they committed a murder uh, is someone who could easily pull the trigger. <laughs> the confession never comes, but there's enough evidence to put Carlton Champion in front of a jury, where Carlton continues to act the fool. He kind of laughed and chuckled the whole time. He's seen his, his lawyer kind of like tapping him, telling him to be quiet and, you know, straighten up or sit up or things like that. He took it as a joke. But it's no joke when the verdict comes in. Guilty of first degree murder. He could have received as little as five years, but after another outburst of arrogance in court, Champion gets life. 
But even that life sentence doesn't stop him from taunting members of Ty's family as he leaves the courtroom. We'll be back on the it was really ugly. As sweet and innocent as he looked, he had that side. It took four officers to calm him down. Carlton Champion Jr. killed Ty Underwood because he was afraid the secret was gonna come out. That if this relationship went south, everyone was gonna find out that he's in a relationship with a transgender woman, and he could not take that thought. Unbelievably, Carlton Champion still thinks he can get out of this. He sends this letter to Crime Watch Daily, writing, the police did dirty work, and he's looking good, feeling good, waiting to get free so I can see what the world got to offer me. But there's no escaping the pain for Ty's friends and family. They're left with only memories of the special person they lost. Sometimes the memories are so good, I can feel it. It, it, it gives me chill bumps. I always had that friendship in my heart. I, was always, I will always walk with her in my heart. So as crazy it might sound, she's still my friend. We're still rocking this world together, honestly.